everyone. This is going to be a really hard video to make, but I thought that I would just let you guys know that Basil, my foster kitten, passed away last night, sadly. Um, so if you don't know, I was fostering kittens, so I was fostering two kittens, Basil and Chai, that are now two and a half weeks old. They were like, they were two weeks in, or they were five days old when I got them. And one of them, Basil, the one who passed away, um, ever since the beginning, she really didn't eat super well. I mean, she ate like the minimum amount for feeding that she needed, but the other one just ate really well, you know, like she was acting fine. She was just, you could just tell she's a little weaker and smaller than the other one. And, um, so, um, so last night, so like the night before she died, so two nights ago, she hasn't ate since then. She wouldn't eat. So like throughout the day she wouldn't eat. Um, throughout the night she wouldn't eat. She just wouldn't eat. Um, he would, like put a drop in her mouth and she wouldn't swallow it. It would just sit there. And um, she was just getting worse and worse. She just started not walking around, not um, not like just not acting herself. Like she was just always laying there and stuff. And they're starting to learn how to walk. They're starting to learn how to do all that cat stuff. And she wasn't doing it. And she wouldn't go to the bathroom. She wouldn't. She was just acting really bad. And it was around 6.50 last night that I, just, I really noticed she started acting worse. I just started really noticing it. Um, at first, I just knew she wasn't eating. Like maybe she, just, she had a stomach bug. We would just try feeding her every hour. You know, maybe she just wasn't hungry. So we just kind of were watching her. We didn't really tell like the foster office yet because you know sometimes just kittens just decide they don't want to eat for a little bit, and that has happened several times to me before. So we were just um, around 6:50, and the shelter closes at seven. Well, actually, the shelter isn't even open on Monday, and it was Monday. So yeah, so the shelter wasn't even open, but it was around 6:50, and um, we really just noticed she was getting worse. She hasn't ate. It's almost been 24 hours since she ate. Like. We just knew something was up. We just had a feeling. So my mom messaged them on Facebook, like for, with the group. Um, no one replied. So now, and she was just getting worse and worse. Still wasn't eating. We just keep her warm. I was just trying holding her, just doing everything I could just to make her feel comfortable and stuff. So then I just put her back in the cage on a heating pad, all covered up, snuggled with Chai, her sibling. I was just staying there like, next to her i was just like crying like i just didn't know it was wrong no one was replying to us and then around 10 p.m you could just tell she when you touched her she wouldn't stand up she wouldn't meow she wouldn't lift up her head she was breathing super hard you could hear her breathing like she was sound super congested you could see phlegm in the back of her throat um she just looked really sick her gums were like pale and it was just really bad so my mom called the emergency foster number. So if you have an emergency after hours or when the shelter's closed, you can call them. They didn't answer, she left a voicemail. And then around 10.30, 10.45, they text her back and said that it sounds like she probably has um, aspiration or aspiration pneumonia or starting a upper respiratory infection. So they were like, um, she, and this, and on the voice, my mom just kind of told them what was going on, and she was a lot better at that. So then, and they just said, you can just try turning on a hot, well then, okay, so after they messaged her back from returning her call, they messaged her. And then my mom, um, my mom messaged, texted them back and said, She's doing a lot worse. She's starting to breathe very heavily and just isn't isn't like acting normal. You can just tell she's getting a lot worse. So they were like, okay, um, you can turn on a hot shower and then sit in the bathroom so it's all steamy with her and hold her and then kind of cup your hand and pat her side to help break up the phlegm. And they said that um, if we could wait till 10 in the morning and my mom was like, no, we can't wait till 10 in the morning. Like, there's no way. So they're like, okay, I can get to the shelter by 8. So if you want to bring her in at 8, I can check her off then. Because they have a vet at the shelter. And we were just like, 
okay um so then we were just doing sat in the hot shower I was just patting her side I was just doing everything that I could I was just like sitting there crying and it was just it was so sad and then um and then so she seemed, sounded like she was breathing better and stuff so I just came Saturday here and went out into the loft and just watched a movie because she sounded a lot better and I needed to get some sleep. I set alarm for every 30 minutes throughout the night. And by this time, it's about 11.30 to midnight around that time. So we were sitting there and um, I was just waking up every 30 minutes to check on her. And, um, and she was just... And so the first time I checked on her, I wasn't asleep yet. I was just still watching the movie. But it was 30 minutes after I put her in here. I touched her. She seemed better. She was meowing. She lifted up her head. I was like, okay, yay. I'm so happy. You know, she sounds better. And then we went back into the loft. And my mom went to bed because she was, like, with me. And she went to bed. And I was just trying to go to sleep. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go check on her again. Because I think I... Which is trying to go to sleep. But then I was like, oh wait, it's been 30 minutes. Because the timer just went off. I was almost asleep. So I come checked on her. And I looked at her and she wasn't breathing. And, she, and I pet her and she was just like stiff. And I just didn't know what to do. So I was just like, I went and my sister was with me. And I just told her to go get my mom. And she went and got her. And then we put her like in a tote. Like a bin, like she like checked her. She was not breathing. She was so stiff. She was just, you like there's no way she was. She could have been back to life. You know what I mean? Like there, there's just no way. So, she put her like in the um, like a little tote thing with the paper towel. And then so we had a previous kitten pass away on us about a year ago. And um, so before kind of jump into that story now because it's explain. Okay guys, it's the next day now and Chai passed away too. So, both of the kittens passed away. He passed away the next night um, that Basil did. So like the night that I filmed the video, that same night. And what I was trying to say is with the other kitten in the past, they wanted us to like freeze the, or not freeze, put the kitten in the fridge just so the, um, so they could do like lab testing and the blood won't be like old I guess. So, that's what we did, and also this doesn't stink, obviously. So, we're going to bury the kittens, both of them. So, how Chai passed away, he wasn't showing any symptoms. He was eating amazing. He was cuddling with me, and then I went and laid him down for the night, and then when I got up to feed them, he wasn't, he, he was just laying there, not moving. And my mom wasn't home at the time, so, was, so I called her, and then she came home. Um, a little bit later and we're gonna bury the kittens tomorrow it's really sad I know but um, I just I just try to look at the bright side that I gave them the best life they could and if I didn't foster them they might have not even lived a few more hours like they could have just died then um, like from the shelter euthanizing them and um, that would just be like, really bad because they won't even have much love until them so I just try to Keep that in mind. Um, if I'm not posting for a while, that is the reasoning why. Because um, I'm just going to get everything cleaned up. And you know what I mean? It's just it's just really hard. And then I'm probably going to be getting um, new kittens soon. Not soon. Maybe like in a week. Kind of soon. We're probably going to get mom and kittens. Because I don't want to... You guys might be like, well, you shouldn't just like jump right into it. You know, like take some time. But I just want to save more kittens' lives. Um, that's my biggest priority when fostering, which is saving their lives. So, yeah. Um, after I get everything all nice and clean and just kind of, you know, just just kind of like get, get over what happened. And, yeah. So, if I'm not posting, I'll try to post my best. I just... Yeah, just if you have any ideas, just comment down below. Um, yeah. Bye. With XO out.